Welcome back to Norton Tesla. There's lots of questions out there about supercharging, from how do you find them to how do you pay. So let's cover the basics of supercharging. Tesla's biggest flex on every other electric car is a supercharger network. No one even comes close to matching the reliability and scale of this network. There are currently 25,000 superchargers worldwide, and that's expanding faster than ever. Now, one of the first questions is how do you find a supercharger? Well, the easiest and most suggested way is through navigation, and this is because the car will actually navigate to the supercharger and it knows the precondition for fast charging. Time for a quick lesson. Supercharging or level three DC fast charging is when the battery is being charged directly through DC power. Everyone remembers AC DC, right? Alternate and direct current. Your home is powered by AC power and your car's onboard charger then converts it into DC and charges the battery. The reason supercharging is so fast is that it can skip the onboard charger, which is limited in the amount it can transfer. The superchargers have a much more robust converter that can achieve those high speeds. So therefore, it can skip the middleman and bypass your car's onboard charger. Batteries in nature are sensitive to heat and cold, and there's an optimum battery temperature where it can transfer the most energy the fastest and most reliable way. So therefore, that's why your car needs to precondition to be able to reach that optimum temperature. If you hit the charger icon here, you'll get a list of available chargers with the amount of stalls available, with their available speeds as well. In terms of speed, there are currently three levels of superchargers. The original ones, as well as some urban ones, are limited to 72 kilowatts. However, most superchargers out there are V2, which are capable of 150 kilowatts. And slowly, Tesla is rolling out their new superchargers, V3, which are capable of 250 kilowatts. But in most situations, you'll just charge at whichever one is on your way. If you click on the supercharger here, it'll show you the fees, as well as a list of amenities down here. If you click below on this food one, you'll get a list of restaurants in the area, which is pretty cool. So once you've decided which supercharger to go to, hit this navigate icon and it'll calculate the route, bringing you to your supercharger. And then the battery should precondition for fast charging. So you arrive at the supercharger, you'll notice most of the stalls are labeled 1A, 1B, 2A, and 2B, and so on. This is because two stalls share the same circuit. So if one car is on A, and then someone else pulls into B, then they start sharing a circuit, and then both cars will dramatically have reduced speeds. So never pull in next to someone unless it's packed. Once you've decided on which stall, carefully back all the way in. The charging cords are really short, so you need to get as close as possible until the left of the lane. First thing is don't worry about your speed, and I mean charging speed. Several factors impact your charging speed. First, whether the car has been preconditioned for fast charging. Like I said, you need to put the supercharger into the navigation for this to occur. The computer will calculate how much time is needed to precondition and will start automatically. If you're not that far away from a supercharger, there just won't be enough time and you'll get a slightly slower speed, but it's not the biggest deal. Second is the weather, extreme cold and heat will impact the speed of your charge. And up here in Canada, we know about cold, and that could really slow down. But the biggest factor in determining the charge speed is your state of charge. Plug in at 5% and you will be going faster than a Falcon 9 rocket. But plug in anywhere over 60 and it's gonna be a slow crawl. As you're progressing through the charge, you'll see the speeds drop off. And that's why you should really never charge over 90% because going from 90 to 100 will take forever. Uh, even 80 is too slow. So if you're in a hurry, just go up to 80 and that's it. If you're trying to buy time because you're at mall shopping and you don't want to have idle charges, then go to 100. That's the only time I would do that. Another thing about speed is if you have an SR Plus, don't worry, your speed will be slightly reduced compared to others, but you have a smaller battery, so it doesn't take as long to charge even at the reduced speeds. So for the cost, all superchargers have tiered pricing. Up here in Canada, we pay by the minute. So and then the tiered is based on the speed of the charge. So if you're below 60 kilowatts, you'll be paying 22 cents. And if you're above 60 kilowatts, you'll be paying 44 cents. 
Uh, there is talks of getting uh, kilowatt based charging up here in Canada, but that's not here yet. Uh, in the States, they do have that. So, and the tier is based on peak demand times. So if you're uh, charging at off peak, you'll kind of find most chargers are at 21 cents and uh, on peak demand is 41 cents. Your goal with supercharging is not to fill up to 100. Like I said, 90 to 100, way too slow, but rather fill up to just enough to get to your destination or another charger. This method results in stops about five to 10 minutes or 20 to 25 at the max. You can use a Tesla route planner or for more advanced trips, check out abetterroutplanner.com. And the best part about the supercharging network, as long as you have a credit card on file with your account, you plug in, you charge, you go, it's that easy. While supercharging, you can check your progress inside the car or within the app. One annoying part is it only goes in five minute increments, which is annoying because sometimes you need an eight minute charge according to your planner. So that's why it's good to keep track of your percentage of what you'll need to get to your destination. Also, while charging, you may hear a series of pops and that's completely normal. It's just the process of popping out the double A's. Just kidding. It's actually caused by a change in pressure between the battery pack cover and the outside temperature. Supercharging causes heat, which sometimes creates a pressure imbalance. And there are some valves in the uh, battery to compensate for this, but sometimes they just aren't able to fully compensate for the pressure change. Uh, it's the same theory of when you ever put a baking pan and it flexes and pops in the oven, same thing. All right, thanks for watching. I hope this cleared up all the basics there is to know about supercharging and you guys are now on your way. Anyways, again, thanks for watching. If you do like this video, give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Anyways, uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks again. Because it will take forever to get to that last 10 to 100. Ah! 10 minutes. And you can use your Tesla route planner or more advanced for, or for more advanced trips, check out betterroutplanner.com your next destination. Also, while charging, you may hear a series of pops, and that's completely normal. It's just the process of the process. Anyways, uh, I hope uh, this little tutorial. So I hope. So I hope this basic tutorial uh, gave you a bit of a heads up and. Uh, All right, so I hope this little basic tutorial covered the basics of supercharging, um, especially for those new owners out there. All right, so I hope this little tutorial uh, helped clear up some confusion. All right, I hope this little base. is a super going through navigation is also the easiest and most useful method because you hit the arrow and the car will navigate to it uh, this is important because your car needs to precondition the battery for fast charging oh god those high speeds so therefore it's a Tesla's biggest flex on every other electric car is its supercharging network. No one even comes close to matching the speed. Like what the, like why, why?